Right. Thank you, Justin. Congressman Sean Duffy is here this morning to weigh in on a few of the issues that we've been following. Thanks so much for joining us Thanks today. Thanks for having me. I'll weigh in on the weather. That was great. I mean, <laughs> yeah, not bad, weather. right? That's Easy fantastic. for everyone to agree on that yes. good weather. Now, let's start with what Congress was up to last week, uh, trying to get funding for the Department of Homeland Security. Of course, at the last minute, a deal was reached. But is this what we're supposed to get used to? Last minute deals? Is this the political theater of the future? Americans always on the edge of their seat? Well, yeah, listen, I mean, you, you have the president doing things that are historically out of uh, the norm, that he's going to try to do um, immigration reform through executive action, and then he wants the Congress to fund it. Um, we weren't going to do that, so we wanted to, we wanted to fully fund Homeland Security, but not fund the portion that we thought was unconstitutional, which was his executive amnesty. Um, so that was the debate we were really having, and truly the Congress has the purse strings, and we were trying to exercise those purse strings, and it, uh, it sometimes becomes a little bit of a messy debate, but that is the American debate, and that's the way it's, it, 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 I think it's happened now, but also for a great part of our history. All right, we do have a couple more budget debates coming up in the near future, yes, one with Medicaid <laughs> and one later in the spring, so we'll see if anything changes with that. Next, I do want to talk about our veterans, specifically yep. the care that they are receiving. As we all know, the Toma VA is being investigated for um, alleged over-prescription use of opiates. Now, Senator Tammy Baldwin has taken responsibility. She has asked for an investigation. As we all know, these government investigations can drag on. What are our veterans supposed to do in the meantime? Well, I'll just say this. I mean, it, it's one thing to ask for an investigation now, but it's another thing when the veterans actually came out and told her what was going on. Um, she didn't do much of anything, um, and we had more veterans get hurt. Uh, she actually saw the, in, uh, the IG investigation and didn't do anything to put pressure on those investigators to open up that report and actually get true reform in the Toma VA. Uh, but looking forward, it's important that we actually f identify the problems within TOMA so we can fix those problems. Uh, men and women who have raised their hand to serve their country, uh, to think that they'd be treated like this, um, where they, 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 they come back and they're getting addicted to opiate drugs because uh, of the malpractice at the TOMA VA, it's not acceptable. Uh, I went to Chairman Miller of the Veterans Affairs Committee in the House and asked him to do a hearing in TOMA. It's so hard for the community to go to Washington, D.C. It's better that Washington come to Toma and sit and investigate and fact find and start the reform process um, with those uh, who have the power in Congress to make those changes. All right, but that's just a lot of talk. So what's the next step, the next action plan? Well, the, the, a lot of talk. Well, first of all, it, it, coming to do the fact finding is the most, the most important uh, phase here. So you can identify the problems and then get solutions. Um, so once we know what the problems are, then we can work on solutions and pressure on the VA to actually fix these scenarios. I'll tell you this page, the first thing is bad actors, they can't stay in the system. You have to fire people who have done wrong by way of our veterans. All right, and that starts with the investigation. Absolutely. All right, let's talk a little bit about right to work. Wisconsin is poised to become the 25th right to work state later today. Union leaders still say that this is hurting their institution. Of course, many Republicans say that this is just merely to give workers more freedom. Do you think this is the right step for the state? Well, I'll tell you this. So first of all, you're asking me about, about, about uh, uh, spending for Homeland Security, and we talk about a little Netanyahu, and this is a state issue. Um, right. I'm dealing on the federal side. And you know, I think we elect our, our senators and our assemblymen to come in and debate and have a conversation and take the, the state in the direction they feel is most appropriate. Uh, but I mean, as we have a debate, and look at people who are working uh, in Wisconsin. Should they have a right to join a union or choose not to join a union? That's really um, the debate we're having, the choice of the individual, whether the union is working for them or not. And I think if, if you look at giving choices to people who are uh, in the workforce, um, if they choose not to join a union, I think unions will then be more responsive to, to, to um, a group of people that they want to represent. Um, and if everyone's forced to vote for me, I may not be a very good representative. If I have to go earn your vote, um, I'm going to be a far better representative, and I think unions could benefit from having to bring people in and, uh, and, and, and get them to you know, work for their employees' votes. All right, so even though you're not directly tied to this piece of legislation, you do support right to work. Well, I'm, I, the, the concept of giving people choices is a, is a good idea. But you know what? Um, the, you, I think unions serve people well. And I, want, I think we want to make sure we have unions that are alive and well uh, in our state and in our country. Um, but I want to make sure they're responsive, too, to, to, to individuals um, who they allegedly represent. All right. Now Governor Scott Walker is supposed to sign that law into, legi into uh, law today. Speaking of Governor Walker, he has come in second place, a strong second in the latest CPAC uh, straw poll. 
Any inside insight into what you think might have in store for him next? Listen, I think I, I think Scott Walker is a, a fantastic governor. He's a guy who's not afraid to uh, to lead and take risk and change things for the better. Um, you, you hear about Jeb Bush. Jeb Bush has a lot of money. We're going to, I think, see a big uh, money report from him. But Scott Walker has a huge grass uh, grassroots uh, support from uh, across the country, and uh, I, I, I would guess he's going to get in this race. And I think he is going to be a powerful candidate, whether he wins a primary. I, I can't say that, but I think he is going to definitely be a player uh, if he doesn't win the nomination. I mean, it's pretty cool that Wisconsin is on the political map like this, whether it's Scott Walker or, or Paul Ryan. Um, we have a unique input on uh, American uh, policy. It's pretty cool. You showed your support for him during his gubernatorial re-election campaign. Would you throw your support behind him for president? Oh, listen, absolutely. I'm a Wisconsin guy through and through. I'm all in for Scott Walker. I'm going to help him all that I can. All right. Congressman Duffy, thanks so much for joining us this hey, morning. Thanks, Paige. Good to see you. Nate, back to you.